Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to explain the most common tools as well as some of the more specialized tools used for patterning in Clo3D. Pattern drafting tools in Clo3D work a lot differently than traditional pattern drafting tools. Often, multiple steps are accomplished simultaneously in digital patterning, which makes patterning faster and easier, but definitely takes getting used to. Check out my Patreon in the description below for the files used in this tutorial, as well as a written guide, project ideas, and one-on-one -on -one support for advancing your skills. Let's get started. All of the basic patterning tools are going to be found in the 2D toolbar, which is right over here. The first tool I want to show you is what I like to call the A tool or the transform pattern tool. And I, the reason I call it the A tool is because the hotkey for it is A. And you can tell that because in parentheses it says A right here. So that's this tool right here. And I like to call this tool like your big hands. So it moves the pattern piece as a whole around the 2D workspace like this. You can also use this tool. You'll see when you click on any pattern, a little bounding box appears around it and you can scale uh, your patterns uh, using this bounding tool. I don't find uh, this particularly useful because there's not many times that I want to scale a pattern evenly from like left to right, but it's there in case you, you like that idea. With the A tool selected, you can also right click a pattern and find so many options for editing, but I will not go over those today. If you want to edit the individual points within a pattern, then you need what I like to call the Z tool or the edit pattern tool. And that is right here. So when I press Z on the keyboard, this, uh, this hotkey appears. And then it, what also happens is all of these points get really big and bold, making it easier for me to click and drag them around. So if I look at this um, sleeve here, and maybe I want to make it a little bit wider, I will click this point and drag it out. And you can see there's these pink guidelines that are also helping me. Uh, those kind of work like your, um, maybe your T square or your, um, your clear plastic ruler, just showing you like how things are lined up. So you don't need a separate ruler because for one, the measurement of my line is already given. And as I move things around, I can, I am measuring as I'm moving. And then also, like I said, those pink guidelines are helping keeping things square. Another tool that is not on the toolbar, but is on the keyboard that you can use to keep things square is the shift key. So when I hold shift and try to move uh, points around, then you can see that I can either move them on 45 degrees, 90 degrees, etc. Um, so that also helps me keep my patterning nice and tidy. You notice that when I held shift, I was able to select multiple points at the same time and then move them together. The Z tool or the edit pattern tool also is used to move individual lines around. So the transform tool or the A hotkey is used to move the whole pattern. And then the edit pattern or the Z hotkey is used to move individual points or lines. With the Z hotkey, or the edit pattern tool, you can also right click a line for more options or a point for more options. All right, to add a new point, you can either with the transform pattern tool, right click any line and then choose split, or you can use the add point split line tool, which is the X hotkey. And when I press X on the keyboard, watch in this, watch as this icon right here just changes from the Z to the um, the transform pattern tool to the add point split line tool. Those two are actually under the same little box. And if you want to access them from one to the other, you actually have to click and hold this box to find them. So edit pattern is the tool we were just using to move the points around. And then add point split line is the one that I just grabbed for um, adding a point or splitting a line. So with that tool selected on any line, I can just click and add a point. I can also right click and then it'll, I can be very specific about how I am adding a point. Is it split in half? Is it, you know, six inches from the one edge? And then that way I am also measuring and marking in the same step. All of those tools can be used for editing straight lines, but if you want to edit a curve, you need the edit curve tool. Once again, it's under the same exact icon as the other two. So there's edit pattern, there's add point split line, and now we want edit curve point. With this tool selected, and that is the 
the hotkey. With this tool selected, you'll notice that all of these red dots appeared. Those are the curve points. And if we grab those and move them, it adjusts our curve. So there we go. You can also click on any line to add more curve points. So maybe we want a curved center front here. And you can right click a curve or a curve point for more options. Those are basically all the tools you need to edit patterns that are already created. If you want to make new patterns, then you're going to need the polygon tool, which is right here, polygon H hotkey. With this tool, I just need to click anywhere in the 2D window and I start drawing the outline of my pattern. And then with each progressive click, I'm adding more points to the outline of my pattern. If I want to finish drawing the pattern, all I have to do is click on the very first point again, and it will just emerge in space. In other tutorials, I will go over how to apply this to the rest of the garment, but for now, we'll just leave, we'll just leave that pattern there. If you click and hold on the polygon tool, you'll see that there are other shape options. So if you're just drafting a neckband, you might want to use the rectangle tool, or if you're drafting a skirt, ellipse, or a flounce, maybe the spiral. The last basic tool you need is the internal polygon tool or the G hotkey. And that is right here. And this is basically, it works exactly the same as the polygon tool, but instead of creating the outside of the pattern, this is the tool for adding lines on the inside of the pattern. So for example, you can see on this pattern, we already have this pocket outline here. That is an internal line. If we wanted to add another pocket, I, like right here, I can just do that. And it works exactly the same as the polygon tool where I just gotta click anywhere inside a pattern since it is an internal polygon, and then click again to add points and you don't have to make a complete shape so you you if you click on the first point again you will end your shape but if you want to just you know draw a line just double click and that will end your line internal polygons or lines are used in lots of ways in color 3d and as you continue to learn you will find even more ways to make this tool useful all right, those were the basic tools that you use to create really any pattern in Clo 3D. Now, now I reset my workspace because I want to show you a little bit more of the advanced tools that are useful in only certain situations, but are pretty fun to play with. The first advanced or specialized tool that I'm going to share is actually the edit style line tool. And that is not in the 2D toolbar, but in the 3D toolbar over here. And the reason why it's in the 3D toolbar is because you use it in the 3D space. I'm gonna go ahead and click edit style line. And then uh, all I have to do is click on this garment and all of these uh, lines and points that exist on the patterns over here in the 2D window have now just appeared on my garment in the 3D window. And all I need to do is click and drag. And basically it's the same as the edit pattern tool used over here in the 2D window, but I can do work live in the 3D window. And you can see that my edits are being made over here at the same time, just like they were in reverse. If I click down and hold the edit style line tool, I can go to the draw style line tool, which is basically like the internal polygon tool, but in the 3D window. So I just have to click on any pattern and then the, the lines and points appear. And I can go ahead and draw maybe from that point to this point and all I did is click on that point and then maybe I'll double click over here to end my line. And you can see in the 3D patterning window, it drew the line from the armpit point to the center front that I drew here. And then it also cut and sewed it. So it made it into two separate pattern pieces. If you are just, uh, if you wanna end the point maybe in the middle of the pattern, you can double click and you can see it also did the same thing where it cut and sewed that line, but uh, it's so small, it's like basically made the world's tiniest dart. Um, so you'd wanna do a little bit more work. So this is really for um, creating maybe princess lines or other types of detail in your patterns in the middle of your garment. One of my favorite tools for fitting is the slash and spread tool. Well, that's what I call it, but it's actually called the fullness point tool. And that is right over here and back in the 2D toolbar. And with that tool selected, you just have to click on any line that you want to start the slash line on. Maybe let's do 
and maybe let's do this pocket and then click on the opposite side or wherever you want that slash line to go to. So if I click up here, I might just hold shift to make that go straight up. Then I just have to select a side to rotate. I will choose this side and then it's giving me basically how much I want to slash and spread that tool. Um, and then I made these cute little baggy pockets. If I wanted to sl like slash it the other way, then I just want to start on the other side. Also, while this uh, slash and spread uh, option is open, you can right click and be very specific about the angle or distance you want to slash and spread. Somehow, even more handy than the fullness point tool is the fullness line tool, which is under the same drop down menu. So, fullness line basically, okay, let's look at this back here. If I wanted to flare out the bottom of this, of this back piece, maybe the um, radiating from the neckline, then I'm going to click along the neckline. So click once here, and then you can see this yellow line is appearing. Click again over here. That's saying that's the area that I want it to radiate out from at the top. And then I want the hemline to be the one that expands. So I'll click along the hemline to maybe there. And now this window automatically pops up and I can type in how much I want that slash line length to expand. So right now the hem is 13 inches. Maybe I want it to be 25 inches. And it evenly distributes that added fullness along that line, which is so handy because in real life you would be making so many slash marks just to achieve that. And press OK. Now I'm going to show you the pleats tool, which is right over here. With this tool selected, it's basically the same as the slash and spread tool, uh, but when I uh, activate it, it's going to add pleats along that line. So maybe I want pleats now running from uh, just maybe mm, from here a little bit outward. So I just clicked on that back line. Now I'm clicking on the hem. This window pops up and it is telling me to maybe I want like three pleats and I want them to be maybe an inch. No, it won't let me do an inch because that's too much. Maybe um, half inch. And then um, let's go ahead. You can choose knife pleats, box pleats, accordion pleats, but I'm gonna go ahead and press okay. And when you do that, it slashes and spreads it adds these internal lines, which the colors mean that they are folded, and it sews it together all in the same step, which is easy, which is nice to do if you have like evenly distributed pleats that are like you can predict. Um, and it is, but you can make pleats manually other ways too if you want to have a little bit more control over how it works. But that's a super easy way to achieve pleats. The last advanced tool that I want to show you is the steam tool, and that is right over here. You'll notice that a lot of these advanced tools don't have hotkeys because they're not used quite as often. But with the steam tool activated, you can see this window popped up that says percentage of shrinkage, um, which is how much uh, I want this fabric to shrink when I steam it, a uh, size, which is just the size of the area of my iron, and then hardness, which is, you know, you can see there's an inner circle and an outer circle. The uh, If I make the hardness less, then it's going to have a really soft fall off. If I make it more, it's going to basically stamp a circle into wherever I click. So let's make it maybe a little bit smaller. And then let's go to hmm, maybe actually this pocket that we slashed and spread. If I start shrinking uh, this pocket in the middle, it turns basically red the more it's, it's shrinked. And yep, that's exactly what it did. So you might be thinking, why is this useful? Uh, well, and there are some um, kinds of sewing I'm sure you're aware, aware of where you do need to manipulate the fabric in this way. And to get a little bit of a sense of how it's going to work in Clothe 3D could help you pre-visualize how well your garment is patterned and will translate into real life. All right, there are so many more ways to alter patterns, but truly all of those ways can be used with the tools that I have already described. Mostly, again, the edit pattern tool or the Z hotkey. If you want to do something in Clo3D that you know how to do in real life, but you cannot figure it out, feel free to add it in the comments and I will help you out in the best way I can. Thanks for watching and best of luck on your 3D patterning journey.